Hey, what's up? Thanks for coming back and clicking on my face and joining my channel. I'm John Stark from MacMovieGuy.com and you're going to want to click that subscribe button because I'm a blind film critic. And I've heard some awesome things happen when you click subscribe. Something about leveling up? I don't know. It's very weird. I can't subscribe to myself. Otherwise, I would know personally. I just... The rumors, some people are saying, you know, the huge out there on the internet is that's, that's, what, the, that's what the words are saying uh, out there. But we're going to talk about Raising Arizona, but I've never seen it until now. Um, <laughs> it was released in 1987. I was a little too old to play Nathan Jr., but that's about how, you know, about how old I was back then. Um, I would have uh, been more appropriately cast in that role. Than, than any of the adult roles. Um, and this is a uh, Coen Brothers film. It's currently on Stars, but it does not have audio description. And when I say currently, I mean like right now when I'm taping this review, I'm also banking this review. I, I'm always honest. That's one of the things you get here at this channel is I really don't feel the need to lie to anybody. So I'm recording this for a rainy day. When I'm not able, when I'm too busy, when work surpasses me and I can't record a uh, review for that day, Raising Arizona will be my review. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it might still be on Stars. I don't know. Um, we'll just have to see. <laughs> so, uh, it was on Stars, and it does not have audio description because Stars does not have audio description. It's something that I've been working on, and why I continue to review Star's content is to continue to highlight the fact that Star's needs audio description. They've been around longer than all of the streaming services, <laughs> so it it becomes a little bit like, it feels a little personal at this point, you know, that they don't have audio description, um, especially when they pick up a show like Minx from Max, and then their second season doesn't have audio description when the first season did on Max. It's like, did you really help us? Did you, what did, what did you really do here? <laughs> anyway, uh, I know it helped the sighted people who were fans of Minx, but it didn't help me. Um, so, uh, audio description is what I talk about. And does the film work without it or with it? Or did I enjoy it? Um, why did I decide to watch Raising Arizona? Well, I will tell you. Uh, the Coen brothers are mo are known really well for having great scripts. So this was a film where I thought, uh, let's try it. Every time I click on a film in stars, I know that for one reason or another, I'm either going to be sacrificing the enjoyment of the film to be able to point out why the film doesn't work, or I'm going to be choosing a film that I think might work to see whether or not it does. And with the Coen brothers, I actually chose a film that I thought might work because the Coen brothers usually have such strong scripts that the script can stand on its own. And this being early Cohen, I think they were still trying to find exactly where that beat was. I think that's fair. I think Cohen brothers have gotten better and better as their career has moved forward. And Raising Arizona isn't that far removed from Blood Simple. So in terms of, of their career, this is still their kind of figuring themselves out a little bit, I think. I don't think they quite have that Coen Brothers pattern yet. Um, they're getting there, though. There's a lot in here that you'll notice feels very Coen. But there's some stuff that I, I felt just really didn't feel like Coen at all. Um, this is like the least Nicolas Cage I've seen Nicolas Cage in a while. Uh, it's funny to see him at the earlier part of his career. Uh, he's, you know, he's become such a... Um, like a parody of himself at times. Whereas here, I was kind of blown away. I was like, wow, he's really subdued. And in so many scenes, he's just kind of, he's kind of chill and laid back and he's really quiet. Uh, and he's, <laughs> it's very, it's a very different performance from him. And, um, of course there are, there are always peaks and valleys to any performance, but that's a very different performance from him. That's all I gotta say. Uh, I was pretty impressed with that. I also really love John Goodman in this. Um, this is John Goodman pre-Roseanne, so I didn't know what to expect. And brilliance is what I got. Uh, John Goodman is fantastic in this film. Uh, Holly Hunter's really pretty good, too, but this also feels like she's gearing up for that... Um, 
for the better performances in her career. But this is all about uh, two criminals, Cajun and Hunter, who want a baby and they just kidnap one. They see the quintuplets and they're like, they don't need all of them. Uh, <laughs> so they take one. And sort of the hijinks that ensue from that. You know, there are some other convicts that, uh, that, that come through. That's one of them is Goodman. Um, you know, they're trying to hide the fact that they now have this baby. They don't really know what to do with it. You know, it sort of explores that aspect of it. It's some people kidnap babies and they're kind of delusional and crazy and they'll keep the baby even if they have no idea what to do with it. And because they've lost their rockers. These people are just lonely and they just wanted a baby and they they realize, oh shit, I have no idea what I'm doing. You know, they're just, <laughs> they're just lost. Um, and it's kind of funny to see how they're trying to figure that out. And also at the same time, you just know it's not going to end well. Um, somewhere during, uh, I would say a little bit after, midway through the film, there's a tracker character that enters the film, a bounty hunter, uh, who is definitely an interesting entrance. I'll give that character an interesting entrance. I thought he uh, added a little bit of flavor, and I was excited to see that character. Um, but he's very much a strong silent type, and without the audio description, I kind of missed a whole lot of the physicality um, with his performance. I don't know how, what he looks like, if he's physically imposing or not. It just kind of feels like he probably is. He's got a chain on him, and I don't really know how he uses the chain a lot. Um, I guess this is a spoiler, but then again, 1987, so I wouldn't be mad if I was watching a Raising Arizona review, and I <laughs> got it spoiled for me in 2023. Um, but, yeah, so there's a, sort of like how things flip around, because he ends up finding... Um, the baby and rescuing it, but then I, I don't know. I don't know how Cage and Hunter end up flipping the script on him. It's kind of a very silent. Um, like I heard some punching, and I had some scuffling, but I don't really know what happened there. And that's the problem with audio description, is like my mind can fill in, but there's only just so much it can fill in. So basically. I just know that somehow Cage won that fight. How? That's your your guess is as good as mine. You know, I have no I have no idea. <laughs> so um, obviously, people who have seen Raising Arizona over the years are like, "Well, duh, it's this." Well, I didn't see Raising Arizona before I lost my vision, so I don't know. Um, but yeah. There are still some scenes, even in this Coen Brothers movie, that uh, I felt I really needed to be, actually be able to see the scenes play out. Um, you know, it's possible there are also side gags, too. It is a comedy, uh, and there, there are things that could be happening sort of behind the scenes, behind when people are talking, um, that are making things funny. Uh, you know, there's a bank robbery sequence, and you... You know, that scene where somebody reaches for the panic button, that's never like a dialogue scene. There's never so, and we never cut to somebody who whispers and goes, I'm going to reach for the panic button right now, okay? Just stay calm. I'm going I'm to, okay, I got it. I just hit the panic button. You know, they never do that. <laughs> it just that doesn't, it's usually just a shot of somebody like being like, boop. Just, you know, it's, it's like a little boop on the button. Um, so I had no idea if it was a panic button pulled or what, you know? It's 1987, so I don't think anybody texted the cops or called them or anything like that from a cell phone. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. There's just so many things along the way where I just kind of go, I... I mean, I got most of it. And I got some really good dialogue. Because, like I said, it's a Coen Brothers, so the dialogue just flows. And when, they, when you put the right person in a role, like John Goodman, man, when John Goodman's got this dialogue going, he just, he just takes it. <laughs> you know what I mean? He just takes some of these scenes and he runs with it. And the guy that's, that plays opposite him, I'm not, I'm not as familiar with him as an actor. Uh, I did not 
didn't know who he was going into this, but the two that play off of each other um, do it quite well and kind of steal the show. I feel like I'm supposed to say that Cage and Hunter steal the show because they're the leads, but it's really Goodman and the guy that Goodman's with that are the scene stealers here. I thought they were the, the hilarious ones that really had this sort of back and forth dynamic that worked out really well. Goodman's the more dominating one, so it's easier to give him the praise and the other guy is more like the, the yes man uh, to, to him, but two great performances. Um, so I really want to like this and I really want to grade this, uh, but I really have to acknowledge at the same time that at least as, as of my recording with stars, they have no intention of adding audio description. Basically, that's what I, I was told. I've, I've been trying to call and work with customer service, uh, and basically all they do is they take your complaint and they just kind of send it off into the cloud. They're like, mm, it goes to somebody. And I'm like, did you need my contact information to hear back so that somebody could let me know? No, no, we don't do that. We, could, we wouldn't be able to email everybody. And uh, I was like, well, how would we find out? Well, we would send out an email to all the stars. So you can email everybody. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, it got a little bit like, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what happens to my email. I think it goes in a suggestion box that nobody ever reads. It's like junk mail for stars. They're just like, yup, we're not going to do anything with that. Um, I've tried emailing the uh, diversity, inclusivity, and equity uh, consult. Um, vice president for stars because not having audio description means you don't get to use the i <laughs> you could be d <laughs> you can be div <laughs> you could be a diversity consultant maybe but uh you're certainly not inclusivity and probably not equity uh we're gonna go with that so um yeah, so we'll see how that turns out, but uh, I'm trying to catch catch her attention and see whether or not I can move some mountains and get some audio description on stars. Uh, there are a lot of films that have existing audio description that they run on stars right now that I know have audio description. They got a lot of Marvel product where you can just pop over to Disney Plus and be like, yep, audio description. Um, so it's kind of just lazy at this point, but uh, anyway. <sighs> I chose Raising Arizona, and of course it didn't have audio description, so now I'm stuck. Do I grade it? Do I not grade it? Where do I go with this? It's a Coen Brothers film. I really want to give this a grade. Um, it's really borderline on whether or not it's watchable or unwatchable. The fact is that you do miss things. And there were things that I walked away with going, I don't know what that was. I don't know what happened there. And I could do that even in a film where I did understand everything. <laughs> You know, even a film with audio description, there are some times where I just go, what was that? I didn't get that. What does that mean? You know, like, I'm going to be honest and say, I watched Tenant the first time. I didn't completely understand it. I was just like, what? It had audio description. I, no, I, I was what? <laughs> like, I was trying to play piece together what Chris Nolan was doing with that film, and I just had no idea. So just because there are a couple things here and there, it's like, how integral are they to the plot? <sighs> and here, um, unfortunately, I'm going to go with my gut instinct, and I'm going to stay on the advocacy side of this, and I'm going to say Raising Arizona is unwatchable. Uh, so, I think, uh, I think there's some stuff here, if you really want to try, maybe borderline unwatchable, uh, but I don't give that as a grade, but yeah, I'm going to stay with unwatchable right now. Has no reflection on the grade, like on the Coen brothers. I'm not saying like it's unwatchable, like, like it's, I don't know, something made from the asylum, like Sharknado 5 or something, you know? Uh, but it's, uh, it just means that for my community, coming from the perspective of a blind film critic, that's, uh, I would not recommend watching this film without audio description. So, unfortunately, them's the breaks. So, that's why you're here. Let's to hear more of that information. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I also have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, threads. I guess Twitter is X now? 
I'm not going to tell people to follow me on X. That sounds dumb. I'm just going to keep saying Twitter and everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, you can also... Uh, you can also go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org, where you can find out what has audio description where you can watch it. It's possible that Raising Arizona will pop up somewhere with audio description. Feels like the kind of thing Amazon would put TTS audio description on, to be totally honest. The text-to-speech, the robo-description, kind of feels like that. Feels like something they might put that on. Um, and then also the adna.org will let you know if you want to search it search your favorite movie or TV show and find out who's narrating it. So anyway, that's it for me today. And I will watch something else and see you guys on the other side.